AG Airways Tai Vovo Rugby Show. Bula, I'm Randall Kamea. Welcome to the Fiji Airways Tai Vovo Rugby Show. I'm Ben Colley. FJ007 Bula, I'm Ben Colley, FJ007 Bula, and welcome to Fiji Airways Tevovo Rugby Show And here's our review And here is our review And here is our review on Super Rugby Pacific But first up is Carlin's review Two passionate rugby nations, and that is what we are about to see. Good pick up from Kahui. Nice little pop ball. Here he goes. There's the front, the acceleration, and the presence of mind to pop the ball up. It's done very well in Rashan Pasitoa to retain that ball and control out. McDermott popping. McDermott for McDermott for Tupo. What's the matter, Nangito? What's the matter, Nangito? What's the matter, Nangito? and welcome to our Super Rugby Pacific review for another week. I'm Carlton Kamea. I thought Argentina played very well to win the HSBC Vancouver Sevens title on Sunday, comprehensively beating our Fiji Sevens team. Our boys scored first to send all our Fiji Sevens fans absolutely wild in Vancouver, but Argentina came charging back with all the answers. They had obviously done their homework. They were very alert to our offloading game and always had a player hanging back, waiting to intercept and cut off our attacks. Argentina also had their very own Perry Baker in Marcos Moneta, an out-and-out -out flyer with speed to burn. So much so that Dan Norton took one look at him flying and Norton called it quits. But we salute the great Englishman. On Sunday in Vancouver, Moneta danced around our boys for two great tries. We missed the extra strike power of Wise Nadungu, who didn't play in the final. Los Pumas were more hungry and they were able to pass in the tackle as our Fiji tacklers attacked the ball and not hitting the ball carrier with their shoulders and arms to bring him down which was a key weakness and which I'm sure Ben Gollings would have taken note of. Argentina won 29-10 and created a bit of history for themselves in Vancouver. The last time they won a HSBC Sevens tournament title was 14 years ago, so good on them. A big Vinaka Vakalevu to each and every one of our Fiji fans for cheering our boys on all weekend down in uh, Vancouver there with such noise, colour and passion. Well done. Kamanieli Rasaku easily won the DHL Impact Player of the Tournament, so congratulations to him. PG did very well in their first leg back to make two cup finals in a row, and for most of their games across both weekends, they displayed outrageous offloads and flair that no one else could match. Wise Nadungu was my Fiji player of the tournament in Singapore, and Rasaku here in Vancouver for his tries, and more importantly, Nadungu for setting up many others with his vision and accuracy. Our young guns would have learned a lot from this, this first leg of the HSBC 7 Series in 2022. So congratulations to Ben Gollings and uh, his support team for all their good work there. In Super Rugby Pacific, the Hurricanes and the Chiefs combined to paste almost a century on Mona Pacifica. 98 points, I think, in total. So to Nackerville, here's Jacobson. Gets the ball away beautifully. Anthony Nanaisaturo kick over the top. That is magic. What have we just seen? Alex Nakano is going to get a second. That's one of the greats from the Chiefs. The Blues picked the Crusaders 27-23 in a classic. The Reds ripped the Rebels 36-32. The Hurricanes zipped the Highlanders 22-21, and the Tars tricked the Force 41-24. The impact that this guy has on this team is invaluable. It's incredible. Ponga swings around. Big the news in the NRL is that Newcastle skipper Kalen Pongla is looking really bad in how he's misleading the Knights and their fans over his dealings with Wayne Bennett 
and the Dolphins. Poor young man's learning a good lesson here. For TeWovoRugby.com, I'm Calden Kamir. Just for those of you who don't know, we've got the ESCO Motors Fan Zone running from the first game we cover every weekend until the third. So uh, to join all the, uh, all the discussion, Talanoa, uh, and uh, sharing of videos and selfies, etc., you can join us by hitting tevovarugby.com and clicking uh, ESCO Motors Fan Zone, and that'll take you to all the action. Zaman <laughs> Dendreng ame kukua, bina paling yo oa, ndu mantan ngundu rai, basa asa mantan ngundu rai, rata ngono timi fijin ruwa, laku cukul, laku bina satu ngai, yo basa mantan kebaka, woi yo mukus tangan timi nindu ruwa, lusi, woi laku wai, paya laku ten, mai, eleven ti wan. Mai lako ke mai 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 level 2 mai 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 level 3 come on come on come on 11 Important reminder to anyone participating in any form of physical activity, or in this case, rugby training, get clearance from a certified medical practitioner or doctor so that you're able to participate in the activity without any fear of getting injured. Now, this exercise here is called the lateral raises or side raises. Um, today, we will be using water bottles. And these water bottles um, can be used anywhere. If you do not have any uh, dumbbells, you can use water bottles or anything with, with weight that you can hold easily in your hand. Now this exercise develops the shoulders. It's not a specific exercise for rugby, but it is used in the off season for development of the shoulders, for strengthening, and also for hypertrophy or bodybuilding. Okay, so with this exercise, just like most exercises or all exercises, you get your stance first. And in this case, the stance is also with shoulder width apart. Okay, now you hold the dumbbells or the water bottles out in front of you with your arms slightly bent, as she has there. Stand upright, big chest, and then as you um, raise your arms out, you slightly turn your wrist forward. Let's go, turn your wrist forward like so, and then bring it down to the center again, control. Nice and easy, out and down, out. And down. Maintain that upright posture all the time, engaging the core. Good. Down. Up. Elbows out. And down. One more. And good. Thank you. Thank you. If you need any advice or help or assistance in fitness or in training in general, you can contact me 
and the details, my details, are on the screen right now. Hello, yo. Oh, yo, they're trying to tell me. Pass the banana, pass the banana. Yo, hello. Oh, yo, we're talking about the gusulu. Yo, we don't know the gusulu. We're not going to carry. Couldn't get it, Baba. Don't know the language. Don't know the language. Don't know the language. Wow, don't know the language. Don't know the language. I skotel ada oleh coach kita. Papa, coach B, coach Ben Kali FJ 007. Bula, and welcome to our last skilled session of season one. Today we're going to look at the grubber kick, which we touched on last week. We're going to look at mainly technique and a few, few drills you can practice at home or at your rugby clubs with a friend. Let's get into it. We'll start uh, first with a soccer ball. Uh, we're using a soccer ball just because it's, it's round, it doesn't have the odd shape the rugby ball has, so it's a good way to start off practicing your kicks as you don't really have to worry about the drop too much as you do with the rugby ball so start with this for your warm-ups and just to practice practice good technique with your kicks and following through and then we'll move on to using a rugby ball so as we spoke about earlier the shape of the rugby ball makes it really awkward to to kick especially if you're just starting out with rugby so you've really got to get the drop right here we're going to be looking at the grubber kick but you can apply this to every other kick, your normal punt kick, a chip in chase, or even a drop kick as well. So for the grubber, we, we're wanting to lean it, have the ball leaning like this, and we're hitting the top, top end of it so that it, it rolls, ro rolls across the ground. And we want, that, we want the ball hitting the ground as soon as possible. Um, often if, if it doesn't make contact with the ground as soon as it comes off your leg, flies across and you don't get that rolling effect which uh, you want your grubber kicks doing. So to start with, so that we take out the drop of the ball out of, the, out of this practice, we're just a ball. Um, standing here, your plant foot, plant foot on the ground and general rule, nose over toes. So standing nice and strong and then just dropping it letting it roll roll across the ground and with with the ground just it's a nice stab and then the, the leg you kick lands lands first um, as a so not you're not putting a lot of too much power through the kick sorry so the reason we've got these cones set out is so that you can practice different lengths of kicks and know how much weight you want to be putting in behind your kicks that's very important for the game um, when you've got support players chasing your kicks or a wing out wide. You really want to want to put the ball on a plate for for them, basically. So guarantees a try scored, or or you um, make valuable meters and maybe set it up for a try in the next phase or or phase after that. So we'll start with a 10 meter grubber kick first. Same thing all the time get yourself set up nicely plant foot nice and strong core engaged nose over toes kick and plant and you can often kick and follow through follow through it so now as you get warmed up you can you can step a bit further back from the cones and take one or two steps into it so that you you can carry on running through your kick and chasing your own kick as well so as you drop it, the foot you kick with lands first and you carry on chasing through, especially with your grubber kicks and your chip kicks. If, if they're not straight ahead, they're often at an angle, but you can still run that support line side to get the, get the pass back or block covering defenders coming across from the opposition team. So here. Oh. So last week we looked at, at catching the ball and running sideways to create some space between you and the defense. 
So that's the last progression here. So just popping to yourself, running sideways, and then putting that grubber kick through. So once you're warmed up enough with your, with your soccer ball, um, you can come back to the rugby ball and start from the top again. So just standing at first, kicking to your friend, and then you can move on through, through those other two progressions once you feel comfortable or you've done 10 off each leg. So we'll st start here and remember, tilt it down and just hitting the top so it rolls across the ground. And we're going, again, we'll start, at, start with the 10 meter, 10 meter kick and then we'll move on to the 20 meter. So here we're gonna, we're gonna go 20 meters now, power through your kick. So same, same thing, nose over toes, staying strong through your core and plant foot. Don't get distracted by defenders running. And so now 25 meters and you can, you can mark these cones out as you want. Uh, 30 meters, 35 or bring it closer for, for little kids, if you're coaching little kids or your young kid wanting to practice. So a bit more power through this one. You can set the width of your, your cones as wide as you want as well, or use the goalposts as a target. And it doesn't matter if it's off center, if your grubber kick goes off, as long as you're staying in the target area, um, that's good enough for your support runners to get in that area and be in the vicinity of the kick to um, recover the ball. So we're gonna go into our last progression of this drill where you're popping, popping to yourself, running across to create some space and then dropping the ball for your kick. If, if you've got another friend that can uh, pass to you during this drill, that would be really helpful as you can catch the ball, um, keep your hands in the position you catch the ball in and the position you're going to pass it in. So you, as you're running across, you can fake and drop it down for a kick or fake and drop it for a, for a chip kick. It puts a lot of doubt in the, in, more doubt in the defender's mind if you're, you will keep, keep all the options open for yourself and your runners stay open for the pass, but they're also in a good position to be able to chase your kicks as well. Just here, to yourself. Ah. Ah. That's better. Thanks for watching. That's our last skill session for season one. Go on to tyvoverrugby.com. There's a load of skills videos you can watch that can help you with your game and you can practice with your friends at school, at home or at your rugby clubs. Binaka. So this, our 10th episode of the Fiji Airways Tevovo Rugby Show is actually the end of season one. So thank you for uh, making this journey with us. Please enjoy the highlights for the best of uh, season one right here. Bosco, I absolutely laughed when I read the, uh, your report on the, uh, the famous game against the uh, British Barbarians in your 1972. Tour. And uh, we gave them a hiding, eh? 29 nights, this was a sunny day. Oh, sunny a day. beautiful day. Yeah, and like Fiji. Mm. And that's how I, say I heard afterwards that when they selected the team, the media people, they complained. They said they selected a very good team against Fiji. Uh, but when I said, when we thrash them, I think they, those people, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to say, when we thrash them 29 9 eh? Yes. <laughs> Our rugby club was established in December 2021. And we were able to get the uh, Isimeli Ulimbao. He's a level uh, two uh, world rugby trainer, certified. And also Varo Alfred Indovarata who's a level three uh, world rugby coach uh, certified and is also a world uh, rugby educator. That's, you know, something big for us as well, to get a coaching of his ma magnitude to come and coach us at grassroots. Well, uh, I didn't find it very difficult, actually, um, <laughs> as long as it was other, there were other people around who would uh, provide the background noise of, <laughs> yes. of excitement. Um, 
Uh, obviously, the best that I think I, I ever knew was Twickenham, without yes. a doubt. Um, and and, um, and then there were, there were others that, that uh, I went through, uh, but they, uh, nothing beat Twickenham at that stage. Yes. Because, of course, at first it wasn't seven. The sevens yes. never started yes. until it was uh, 1976. Yes. Training these kids is like uh, when you have a son. It's very hard. Sometimes it uh, really uh, gives you a headache and uh, it takes uh, patience and uh, perseverance to keep them in a group to work with them. My name is uh, Sir Mambai and uh, I run the, the Rugby Academy uh, program. The program is uh, from ages five to 13 both for boys and girls. Since we first started, I think only eight kids attended and then we grow from there. At times we have about 100 kids 